What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about the Falkland Islands. Apparently, there's just an entire British territory that I've never heard of ever before. You know, I don't claim to know everything about British culture and Britain, but even I was pretty surprised to learn there's just an entire British landmass island that I've never heard of ever? I, I kind of, I want to know what this is all about. I want to know what's going on at the Falkland Islands, if that is your real name. Experiments, perhaps? Secret experiments? No, I'm just kidding. But but are they? Secret exper experiments? <laughs> but seriously, I wanted to uh, learn a little bit about the history of the Falkland Islands and exactly how this all came to be. So I have uh, the Wikipedia pulled up here. And you know, even if you look at the flag uh, on the right, it has the, the British flag in it. The Union Jack is part of their flag, as well as a sheep. That's kind of fun, sheep in their flag. So this is a set of islands by South America. Like, yeah, let me pull up a map. Make no mistake, here we have the United Kingdom and yes, as most Americans understand it to be. And then if you go down, down, down here, nope, past Africa, down to South America, then finally, <laughs> down here, if you zoom in, sure enough, Falkland Islands. How on earth did this become part of like the British Empire or modern day Britain? It's, a, it's classified as a British overseas territory on the Wikipedia. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Uh, if I read a little bit here, okay. The Falklands have internal self-governance. Not exactly sure what that means, but the UK takes responsibility for their defense and foreign affairs. Okay, I mean, that's pretty significant. Interesting. So it is kind of like its own mini nation that is still an extension of the UK, I guess you could say. Anyway, I have a little video here that's hopefully gonna explain this to me a lot better. Uh, it's gonna talk about the history of how, I don't know, the, Falk, the Falkland Islands became part of Britain all the way up to the present day, pretty much. So let's take a look. Hi, English Mariner John Strong. Hi, Anthony Carey, 5th Viscount of Falkland. <laughs> I would very much like for you to go to Chile and locate the wreck of a Spanish treasure ship for me. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait. This is how it happened. <laughs> hey, I found some islands. <laughs> okay. This is very simple to understand. This is perfect for me. So literally, uh, the UK was like instructed uh, to travel to find treasure by South America, or I think they said by Chile, and ended up discovering these islands. Well, that at least gives like a little explanation for what on earth uh, the Falkland Islands have to do, how they're connected at all to Britain. And this is kind of how it happened. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh. The English were probably not the first to discover the Falklands, but they were the first to write it down. They okay. found it to be cold, wet, and miserable, just like home. So they established <laughs> a colony. In just like home. It is like a little mini Britain. Very good, okay. They found it to be cold, wet, and miserable, just like home. <laughs> so they established a colony in 1765, unaware that the French had also discovered the islands and done the same a year earlier. And what? for a while, the two were unaware of each other's existence until presumably there was an awkward moment where they ran into each other. <laughs> then the Spanish showed... What? That is... It's so crazy how history works. It's, it's oftentimes better than fiction. Like, you couldn't make this stuff up. So this is the 1700s, like, you know, almost 300 years ago. You got uh, Britain establishing a port in the Falklands or Falkland Islands, not knowing that the French had done that too. This is obviously a set of islands. I think that's called an archipelago. And they're on completely opposite ends and didn't even know it. 
Spanish showed up and told the French that a couple hundred years earlier the Pope drew a line on a map and said all of this belongs to Portugal and all of this belongs to Spain and that the island was in Spain's territory and they would like the French to hand over their settlement. Now since the two were good okay. friends and Spain was willing to pay in cash money, the French obliged. But since they were still a little bitter about the recent Seven Years' War thing, they made sure to warn the Spanish not to let those dirty English on the other side of the island take over. Oh, wow. This is fascinating and it's also... Somehow the most inconspicuous set of islands is already involving like three different nations almost having a conflict. Not yet, but I, but I imagine something's going to happen. The Spanish came, asked the French to leave. So now it's just the Spanish and the British uh, on opposite ends of the Falklands. So Spain went over to the English and explained, Pope, line on map, Spain's island. And the English said, yeah, right, this is our island. Oh. But the Spanish had more guns, so they kicked them off anyway. Okay. But then England threatened to go to war. So Spain went to their friends in France and said, hey, it looks like stuff is about to go down. You in on this? And the French minister of war said, yeah, and we'll launch a full-scale invasion of England and party like it's 1066. <laughs> but then King Louis XV said, one, you're insane, and two, you're fired. Sorry. <laughs> I really enjoy uh, the simplified explanation that is happening here. Spain, we're not ready for a war right now. So Spain had to give the English their settlement back, saying it's still our island, and the English said, no, it's our island. Man, the English really, really wanted this island. Is there any particular reason? Because uh, it's already causing a conflict with the French, it's causing a conflict with the Spanish, and I guess the, the thing that sticks out to me is this is so far away from the UK. It's like on the opposite end of the Earth. So why, why put so much resistance and effort into to fighting over this? Then some colonists in North America got a bit rowdy, so the English <laughs> had to leave their settlement to go focus on that. But they left behind a plaque that said this is totally still our island. <laughs> Did this actually happen? This is like funny without even trying to be. Uh, Did Britain really leave a plaque behind on this island? Basically saying, our island, this is our island. That is actually funny. I wonder if that's, like, historically accurate. So the island was in Spanish hands, but then a French guy, no, not that one, <laughs> that one, turned on the Spanish, took over most of the country, and captured King Ferdinand VII. And in response, the Spanish colonies in South America started vying for independence. Okay. So Spain had a little bit on its hands and also had to leave the island. Okay. That's so funny. Like, every single time, one of the countries has something going on somewhere and has to leave. And it's like, whoever's left over gets the Falklands, basically. For a couple decades, the islands were left uninhabited except for the penguins, some fishermen, and the gauchos, which are basically like cowboys, but cooler and Spanisher. And huh, who? Was anybody living on the Falklands originally? You know, when, when the English first arrived on their ship and discovered it, or the French discovered it, was anybody there to begin with? Like maybe South Americans or something? For the penguins, some fishermen, and the gauchos, which and are- And there's, there's a uh, penguins. <laughs> maybe it was the penguins. Or these, these gauchos, but they're Spanish, I think? Basically like cowboys, but cooler and Spanisher. Huh. A merchant from Hamburg living in the now independent United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata heard about the feral cattle roaming the Falklands and thought it would be a good way to make some money. So he okay. got permission from both Buenos Aires and the British government to set up trade there as a private venture. Some American ships came huh. down and began hunting whales and seals around the islands, and Vernet wasn't too happy about it. So he asked Buenos Aires for some military assistance in defending the islands, but... Even, like, America is getting involved with this unintentionally. And believe me when I say I have never heard about this or this island or this conflict or that America was even a small part of it. Buenos Aires said, meh, do it yourself. Okay. Gave him some weapons and appointed him governor of the islands. So okay. he seized the US ships and arrested their crews. Whoa. In response, two things happened. First, America came down and said, nice settlement you have there. Would be a shame if someone destroyed it. <laughs> and then they destroyed it. <laughs> oh no. Second, Britain heard Rene had been appointed governor, meaning the United Provinces, actually now the Argentine Confederation, were officially claiming the islands as theirs. So Britain showed up and said, hey, didn't you see our plaque? And since they had more guns, they kicked them off the island. Wow. And the Falklands remained firmly in British hands for the next century. They officially became a crown colony wow. in 1840. Port That's significant. Okay, a lot of stuff happened there. Uh, kind of hard to recap. But at the end of the day, after all the conflict was over, like, Britain came out on top. Maybe because, as the narrator said, they had the most guns. But a hundred years passed, and it's... a basically a British territory. I'm, I'm surprised at that point if 
that actually changes. Like, but apparently there's a lot more to the story. Falklands remained firmly in British hands for the next century. They officially became a crown colony in 1840. Port okay. Stanley became the island's capital in 1845. Okay. The cattle hides from the island weren't worth much, so they imported sheep from Britain in 1851. They imported sheep? And sheep is on their flag. Wow, that, so that's like their, I don't know, I think that helps make them money? Because the cattle ended up kind of being a bust? 51. Two world wars came and went, and all this time the Argentinians never rescinded their claim over the islands. Oh. Now it's 1970. Wow, so Argentina, like, really, really uh, staked a claim over this island, and obviously has been up, even after a hundred years, is still upset about it. 76, and after a couple civil wars, a new brutal military dictatorship sponsored by the U.S. fight against communism has taken control in Argentina. Oh. And by 1981, this guy was in power. Okay. The economy had been struggling for a long time, and Galtieri had been unable to improve the situation. Now, if you ever find yourself the brutal military leader of a struggling South American country, and you start getting into hot water, here's a bit of advice that has been tried and tested throughout the centuries. Start a war to distract everyone from their misery. <laughs> Galtieri uh, knew how popular he would be if he could finally take back Argentina's last Malvinas from the occupying British. There had really? Argentina? Wow. So taking back Falkland, the Falklands from the British Empire was like very, very, very important to Argentina for some reason. I don't know if that's like a pride thing or just a symbol of like, this is our territory since the beginning of time. And it's just, I don't know. They, they feel like they own it, and that's kind of enough to, to wage war over. How popular he would be if he could finally take back Argentina's last Malvinas from the occupying British. There had been okay. proposals to cut British military spending, and the ice patrol vessel, HMS Endurance, had been withdrawn from the area. So the okay. Argentinians assumed the British may not even bother doing anything about the invasion. After I gotta say, yeah, I mean, it's, it's horrible that this is all causing wars and death. But why... why... Do the, does the British Empire even care about this island? It's so far away. It seems like more trouble than it's worth, I guess. After easily capturing the largely uninhabited South Georgia Island, 600 Argentine troops were sent to the Falklands. The small number of Royal wow. Marines and other British forces stationed there put up a small amount of resistance, but in the end had to surrender to the larger Argentine force. Wow. Crowds in Ar wow. The, Falk the Falkland Islands was actually, there was like a battle there. And Argentina took took it over, essentially. But I don't think this is the end of the story either. Argentina celebrated because uh, I'm I'm reading the Wikipedia earlier, and it's clearly under British rule to this day, right? The news, but they were wrong to assume the British would do nothing because the person mm -hmm. in charge of the United Kingdom at the time was this lady. Thatcher was okay. a somewhat controversial prime minister, but whether you man, it's also incredible to me how recent this all is. Like, we're talking about Margaret Thatcher? Like, this whole conflict between uh, Britain and Argentina is not all that long ago, huh? You loved her or hated her. There was no denying that she was tough, like metal. Okay. Iron, for example. She immediately declared an exclusion zone around the islands and organized for a task force of over 100 ships to set sail for the Falklands. The United Whoa. Nations expressed concern at the Argentine invasion. All South American nations apart from Chile backed Argentina. And since the United States had propped up the Argentine dictatorship, Reagan went to Thatcher and said, could you maybe just let them have the islands? <laughs> that's like, <laughs> that's, that's literally me. That's literally me. I'm sure this is has a whole different meaning to British people having these islands, I assume. But to me, as an American, I'm like that. I'm like that guy. I'm like, can you just maybe let them have it? Does this mean anything? Is this important? <laughs> Is this worth going to war over? And Thatcher said no. Okay. Okay, here, have some weapons. Fighting a war over <laughs> okay. 8,000 miles from home was a logistical challenge for the British. They yeah. requisitioned civilian cruise ships and containers, and they used British-owned Ascension Island as a forward base. By Ascension Island? There's another island in the middle of nowhere by in between Africa and South America. That's also a British territory. Brit somehow Britain owns the most obscure, strange, like, islands. Like, is there some kind of British island floating by, like, the United States I don't know about that <laughs> is, like, British owned? 
By the time they arrived at the Falklands in May, the Argentine forces had had time to entrench themselves. The first task for the British was to gain control of the seas, which they did easily. On the 2nd of May, a British submarine sank an Argentine cruiser. The sinking was controversial, wow. as it occurred outside the British exclusion zone. It was also the largest loss of life in a single incident during the war. Wow, 323 killed in the sinking of this ship. Man, this is like, honestly, a modern day war that I really didn't even know happened. And in response, the Argentine Navy withdrew from the islands. The next task for the British was to gain air superiority. While the Argentine Air Force controlled the skies, they were able to inflict considerable damage on the Royal Navy below. Days okay. after the sinking of the General Belgrano, two Argentine Super Etendars carried out a raid on the HMS Sheffield and wow. sank it with an Exocet missile. For weeks, the Argentine Air Force would continue to carry out raids and inflict heavy casualties on the Royal Navy, wow. with British Sea Harriers doing their best to take out as many of the Argentine aircraft as they could. While the battle in the skies raged on, San Carlos was chosen. This is like kind of this is tragic like there's no getting around it i i honestly didn't know there was like this whole conflict um it just seems like somehow like uh, the british military appears to have more resources even though they're fighting a conflict on the other side of the earth i think they said eight thousand miles away from britain they seem to just have more military power it seems as the best landing site for the British ground forces. An SAS raid took out Argentine defenses on Pebble Island, and the HMS Alacrity sailed through Falkland Sound to flush out any Argentine supply ships. Okay. The landings began on May 21st, with Argentine aircraft carrying out full-scale raids on the task force ships taking part in the landing, damaging Damn. several and sinking a few. But anti-aircraft cannons and sea harriers shot down many of the aircraft in what became a major turning point for air superiority, and a beachhead was successfully formed. Then the ground troops began their move. Interesting. So... So Britain basically gained control over, I mean, I don't know, if we zoom out a little bit, kind of the center, no, no, yeah, kind of the center of the Falkland Islands, established like a little ownership. Equity said aircraft carrying out full-scale cannons and sea harriers shot down many of the air ground troops began their movements out of San Carlos across the north towards Stanley and south toward the Argentine stronghold at okay. Goose Green in the okay. following battles a clear trend emerged the Argentine conscripts put up a good fight and with the rough muddy terrain the war was by no means easy for the British but with highly skilled Royal Marine commanders and parachute regiment troops the British would often find themselves taking on larger numbers of Argentinian soldiers but would still come out victorious with minimal casualties Wow so it's literally a land invasion at this point literally running in trenches and in the mud and uh yeah it also sounds like maybe the the british military was a little little better trained as well and winning on the ground even with less men the 14 hour long battle for goose green commenced on the night of may 28th the battle ended in a decisive british victory with over 900 okay. argentinians surrendering then with 5,000 reinforcements arriving from the fifth infantry brigade the british started preparing for their final assault on stanley in okay. a series of hard-fought battles they took control of the hills and mountains surrounding the town wow. as the argentine forces withdrew with british ships shelling their positions from offshore utterly surrounded on the 14th of june the argentinians surrendered and the war was over wow there was a literal war over the falkland islands and it sounds like Britain won pretty decisively and eventually made Argentina surrender. And I'm guessing, since this video is almost over, that's pretty much the end of it. That's why this is a British territory. The two-month-long war claimed hundreds of lives and left the islands strewn with minefields that still pose a problem to this day. Oh, Argentina wow. still claims the islands, but in 2013 a referendum was held and the islanders voted 99.8% in favor of remaining... British. Wait, okay. So Argentina still felt like they owned this territory, but there was a vote. Ten, year, ten years ago, there was a vote uh, with the inhabitants of the island getting to decide. And basically, it sounds like there, it doesn't have a very big population in the Falklands, but basically they all decided we're British. We're British territory. So what are you going to do? The people literally living there want to be under British rule. British. Plus, oil was just found near the islands, so the British probably aren't going to give them up anytime soon. Ah, okay. <laughs> wow, that was great. That was, that was a good little explanation of kind of a nuanced topic. That was by Oversimplified, and I gotta give that video a like. Okay. Um, who... That It kind of makes me wonder, who lives on the Falkland Islands, like, to this day? Is it British people who live on the Falkland Islands? Like, 
there are people that identify as like British that are so far away from Britain. Is is that basically what it is? Oh, hold on. Population, 3,600 inhabitants, is primarily native-born Falkland Islanders, the majority of British descent. There's also French, Gibraltarian, Scandinavians, immigration from the UK, but mostly British descendants. Interesting. I wonder, uh, I guess some British population decided they just wanted to be the ones who lived there? Was there some kind of migration where some people from Britain were like, ah, the Falkland Islands belong to us, so let's go sail there and live there? Something like that, because apparently they've been doing it long enough that they're, the descendants of, of uh, Brits live there to this day. Do they have British accents, or is it like its own little Falkland culture? That's an interesting question, but... This, this satisfies a lot of the curiosities I had, and I don't know, it's fascinating that such a huge conflict and history happened over these islands that I was completely unaware of. But I'm glad I'm aware of it now. It's fascinating, and I don't know, fascinating to just discover out of nowhere that there's a, a British territory that I'd never heard about. So uh, this was good. I'm, I'm glad I learned about this. It was fascinating. Uh, enjoyed it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to British culture and Britain and British things I've never learned about, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.